Hi, my name's Caroline. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm a hobby seamstress and today I'm going to be making the robe en chemise, this French gown. Um, I wanted to sort of follow this pattern that I got from the book. Let me just pull this book over. It's... Oh! Alright, I just <laughs> made a bunch of stuff fall, but anyway. Alright, The Cut of Women's Clothes by Nora Wag, W-A-U-G-H, and um, this is late 18th century book, or er, um, pattern, so that is what I'm going to be using. There's a lot of good stuff in this book, I would highly recommend it. Um, so I just got it from the library, so, because um, it's kind of a little bit expensive but definitely worth it so this design is extremely simple literally it's like a huge box i would definitely recommend this for somebody who's just trying it out and they want to make something and it actually looks good and really professional this you really can't mess up too bad i mean and also it hides a lot of the flaws in the folds of the um fabric as you'll see them when, when the thing's done it looks really professional but really if you opened it up it's not that professional okay <laughs> so Highly recommend this style of gown for somebody starting out. I wanted to make it a little bit different and add like a long sleeve at the end to make it look like this painting that I found, but um, you'll see that at the end. So basically I didn't even measure, like I didn't even make this to like now, I, I eyed the whole thing. So I'm like, well, I wanted to use enough fabric where it bunched a lot. So I, I used probably five yards in total. Me, I, I could have used less, and actually looking up some pictures of it, it, it seemed they used less fabric. Um, so I don't think you need it, and the rest I sort of measured. For the sleeve, I could have gone a little bit shorter, but I didn't. Um, but I eyeballed the whole thing, basically, and like, I just... Because the front part is a little bit lower um, than the back part, you basically just have to cut up the uh, front part but as long as you make the front and the back you know the same it's just a big thing it's basically like making a curtain basically you just have to cut out the armhole thing but other than that it's extremely simple so here's how i started it i like i said uh so the story about this fabric is um I got this when it was on super sale, wanting to make for only $2 a yard. It's just a thicker cotton, but it's a really pretty color. I guess it's Oxford purple? Or I don't know, my mom told me what it was, but it's really pretty. And um, I got it for super sale, thinking, and I got 12 yards of it, or like 10 or something, thinking that I would make a uh, pinked dress, you know, with little holes in it. But then I read somewhere that... No, they didn't pink cotton because it would, like, tear and all these things. And, oh, it's so wrong. So you can only pink with silk. I'm not sure if that's right, but I'm like, oh, great. So basically why I bought this was for, for not. So um, I ended up making... I ended up, like, looking at some pictures. And I was like, I really want to make this um, sort of flowy dress. Now, I've never seen it done. I had never seen it done in a, in a color before. At the end, and when I posted a picture of the found, foundations revealed, like, thing, um, somebody sent a picture of a mauve one, like a lighter pink. So I was like, oh, I guess they did do them in colors. I thought maybe they just did it in white. But, I mean, I've never seen one this dark, so I don't know if that's, like, correct. But I, it looked really dramatic at the end, so I did like it. So what I did here in this first part, what I'm doing is just putting it on my mannequin and I got this mannequin like super cheap it was like the Land's End store is closing at Sears so I was able to get like $30 mannequin and it basically fits my waist so highly recommend looking at stores uh, that are closing for mannequins because I kind of want to get rid of everything in there so here I'm just want to like make sure it's bunched enough for that neckline this is literally like the only thing I did for the you know how to find the length so I just bunched it all just to make sure and it kind of marked off how low I wanted the neckline to be um, and then um, for the back I just doubled it like then I unstretched it you know and then I'm like measured it, it was about 40 inches um, for that front half 
So I was like, all right, I'll just double it and then that'll be the back. So that's how I got the length of the whole thing. It ended up being probably, I want to say I used like five yards of fabric. But anyway, um, I just uh, used this top part. Like I basically cut off this top part, you know, when I unstretched it. And then I cut underneath for this armhole right here. So that's the two things that I cut. Um, and then the rest was no cutting at all. Yeah, can you believe it? <laughs> it was so easy to make this thing. I was so shocked. Um, all right, so I did the armhole. So that was after I bunched it out. I let it all go. So then I knew where to cut the armhole. I, I had put some pins in just to mark it. And now you can kind of see in the picture, it's like, all right, well, the armhole, you need enough for the strap. So I, I mean, I kind of like eyed the whole thing. Um, I didn't feel like making this big production. I just wanted a quick, easy slap on the back for myself, pretty much. So, you know, you need enough for the arm strap, so I kind of took that into consideration. And then it kind of, you can see in the pattern, it kind of slopes up from the bust up to the, you know, strap. So I just kind of sloped it up. Um, and I gave it enough room to, like, fold over, because what you're going to do is going to fold over and make, like, a little, um, you know place for the ribbon to come out and tie it in the front so next I'm just putting where the back strap is gonna go that's right there um, and then from there I measured out like the width that I wanted which was two basically the front times two so 40 times two so 80 inches for me um, I could have made it less, actually. It was kind of a lot when it, you know, came down to it. Like, it was, like, really gathered. But, I mean, it looked good. Like, I liked it. But, you know, probably could have done with less fabric. But honestly, I was just trying to get rid of this fabric. Because it was just sitting there doing nothing. And, um, it was, like, a ton of fabric. So it also was, like, just sitting there. <laughs> so anyway, I was kind of trying to use it up. All right, so this pick. So when I got to the back, I was really confused because you know there's all these paintings. I wanted just to bunch the whole back because this thing didn't really show the back bunched, and also I didn't photocopy the parts where it explains how it was made like a dum dum. I just thought, oh, I'll just do the pattern. Like then I'll figure it out. No, they have all these other sections that's like explaining what it was made out of and how it was worn and blah 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 which I neglected to look at so yeah next time next time but anyway um I saw in Bernadette Banner's page that she had the top like not since and I found this one picture that I flashed up that also was like all um you know bunched in the back too so I'm like but there's some pictures that it's not that way so I guess you guys have to like some it has like a finished back so you guys have to figure out which you guys prefer but this was the easiest thing, and I just wanted to just make something really fast. Sometimes you just want to make something, and you're like, yeah, I succeeded. You know what I mean? You want to just finish it in a couple days. Like, sometimes you're just, like, so daunted with a project. You're like, I, I don't want to be sitting here making this for ten years. But um, that's basically what this project was for me. Like, a quick little thing I could do and feel good about myself for. And when I was making it, I was like, oh, this looks so dumb. Like, as I was making it, because I was like, wow, it looks like a big curtain. But at the end, it turned out. <laughs> so. All right. And so now I am, like, measuring where I want the um, gathers. Because there's two places where you put the... And this it specifies in the pattern. But there's two places where you're going to put the gathers. And I want it to be, like, right underneath the boob, like the underbust. And then also you want it at the waist. So basically, I just measured down, made a straight line, essentially. You know, it doesn't look like a straight line because it's, like, on a diagonal kind of thing but it would have been a straight line you know what I mean if I hadn't cut you know what I'm saying so basically I just went in with my you know pencil and I just penciled in where that was I don't remember the exact um amount so anyway so once I did that I did the exact same thing on the other side that I did on this side I just folded it over and just cut the exact same thing so um one then I was ready to put the ribbon in and like literally this is like when you make a curtain, like I don't know if anybody's made a curtain before, but um, you just, I just put this tape in, 
Maybe there's a different way of doing it, but like I just this to me seemed right. So yeah, this is like a bad video. You can't even see it, but whatever. Um, I don't know why I did this angle, but so I had I got this ribbon that was the same color as the fabric, and I just literally pinned it on the line. Um, like <laughs> you can't really see it, but I pinned it on the line, and then um, I went to the sewing machine, and I just pinned just a whole straight, like essentially, um, you know, casing. Yeah, casing. Um. For the ribbon to go. Now, do you guys like when I have the sewing machine in here? Like, is it boring? I don't really know. I'm trying to figure out what's boring or not. Um, or do you like it better when I just like show you the results? I feel like that. It's like more like a vlog style. But anyway, write your comments below. Um, so I just made the casing, and then I did the same exact thing for the. Um, you know, waistline, and now I have two, like, casings right here, and then all I did was take my ribbon, which is this, like, gray kind of silver sheer ribbon, and I just took a paper clip and I put, pulled the whole thing through, so essentially now I have two pulled through, um, things, so now it's, like, kind of shaping up to be a thing and like everyone in my family was like we don't see how it's addressed like <laughs> I put it on the mannequin and like you don't see it it's like it's there like hello like you, it wraps around they're like ah, how is it addressed like how and I'm like all right whatever I give up um and like you can see the front it looks like a dress but so then what I did is I made like a casing for the front part. So I left the little part open for the, um, you know, strap because that's where I went with the strap. And then I just encased, made a little encasing, basically folded over the top. And I did the same thing. I just pulled through the string. So now we have even more of a dress. All right. So I don't know if they you knew it was dressed by then because they went to bed. But um, so now I'm going to add the straps and I just use my own measurements for these straps. Um, and I, you know, made the back match up and I just went to the sewing machine and sewed them on. I didn't finish really any of the seams inside because there wasn't too many seams to finish inside because, you know, really the only thing that needed to be finished was the, um, what's it called? That little strap bit and then the, um, sleeve. So here you can see it's coming into shape. Um, this is the back. See how it's really bunched? I was like, oh, it's so bunched, but really I just kept pulling it and pulling it and pulling it until it was squeezed so tight, like, it could barely fit one more little shred of any more fabric in the bunch, but I think it, like, worked at the end, so. Then I moved on to the sleeves, and I would have actually made the sleeves a little bit, um, shorter, um, next time, but because of how I made them, I was able to get them the right length, so whatever. And I did the same exact thing um, that I did with the dress. Like I made a thing of ribbon through because that's gonna be the middle one. And then in the in the end and the bottom part, I just folded it over and made a little casing. And then I just you know put my ribbon in both sides. Now the one in the inside, you're not going to see the ribbon coming out. It ties on the inside um, to just give you a puff. And then the outside ribbon, you're going to see the one in the outside. See, you can see, like, um, the outside ribbon. You're not going to see that because I'm going to close the, um, you know, sleeve with that ribbon inside. And that's really just for you to um, tie it at whatever height you want it. Like, I tied it a little bit higher on my arm because I wanted to get that second puff look to it. So, and I thought I could, like, finish off the seams of, like, the, um, you know inside of the sleeve part but um I didn't really need to like it it didn't show so I just didn't bother so and I wanted to add an under sleeve because I just thought it would look cool so I basically drafted a sleeve it's from some other pattern like a renaissance pattern or something but I just needed like a long sleeve 
um, and I just put it on the inside of the sleeve and then I went to the sewing machine and just gathered the uh, over sleeve I'll call it onto that inner sleeve so now I have like an inner sleeve over casing thing um, so that's why I used both sleeves because I wanted to have a cool like under sleeve look to it um, I didn't like just put it on the ed end of the sleeve like you could have done that but I found when you do that it just doesn't look as cool like it looks better when you have when you don't do that when you have a separate sleeve and then have the big over sleeve over that I found it just lays better nicer so that's what I prefer to do now um, with my sleeves when I want to do this puff thing I do love puff sleeves. Okay, and then here is it um, on the mannequin with the sleeves on. It's done, basically. I didn't finish the inside. Um, it has the inner sleeve in it. And I added some lace to the... The only thing you're not going to see on this camera is I added some lace to, like, the top, and I added a little bit of lace to the bottom of the sleeve. And I cut off, you know, all the trims and things. I did not finish the opening, because honestly, when I tried it on, you didn't even see it. Like, um, the opening of the dress. You didn't even notice it wasn't done. So, I mean, if you guys want to finish everything, but... And then I just hemmed it, you know... And hemmed it really quick. I but I did make an under skirt because I had a lot more of the material left. So I just really quick, you know, made an underskirt. It was about five yards. But if you want to see how I made that, just go to my making an underskirt or overskirt um video. Yeah, I just made it really quick because I just it, it, I was afraid it was just gonna open up, which it did. Like you sort of need an underskirt. I wasn't sure what they wore underneath this because it does have that open thing so like and I I tried asking in the foundations group or whatever but nobody really got back to me about it so I was like well I guess they just wear an underskirt and I did not wear any stays with this I didn't wear um uh any sort of bra or anything with it because in a lot of the photo a lot of the paintings they saw their nipples so i'm like well i guess i'm showing nothing that it probably was for like the painting's sake to make it look more grecian or something i don't know but i think it looks good without it so i'm happy with it i tried to do my hair in like that duchessy way with the two sides things but i'm not sure if it really shows but um yeah i think it looked cool um so uh yeah I really liked it. I think the I think the ribbons look really nice with it. And it looks a lot better than really what it was. I mean, it's not even finished inside. It was a very very simple dress to make. So if you guys really want to get into it and make something, I highly suggest this dress. It was very simple. Um, you know, I just over I complicated it with the um, the sleeve. You really could have been just made one simple sleeve. Um, or just on one puff sleeve. I mean, I needed like a double puff sleeve with whatever because I wanted to look um, really fancy. You can kind of see the lace here. Um, just matching lace, so that'll look cool. Um, yeah, so really highly recommend making this dress. It was very simple. I mean, you don't even really need like an exact pattern. Like literally just, just take four yards or something and just make a curtain out of it. And it should work. Like, I mean... I don't know. I was really happy with it, how easy it was. Um, it seems a lot more complicated. Um, but I think I chose a much easier route because I just kind of gathered the back. I didn't really um, do much to it. So we went to this graveyard and, and took these this video. Um, yeah, I was going for like a more gothic theme, I guess, because of the dark. Um, color of this movie was a she was a ghost and that's why she's wearing the dark robe en chemise so thank you guys so much for watching um i really hope you enjoyed this um so please subscribe and um consider supporting me on my patreon thank you so much